Hello everyone, I'm Vasudev Chitaridi from uh, CQ Rockhampton campus. Today I'm going to give you a short description on digital process. In this video, I'm going to discuss what are digital process and the different types of digital process, history of digital process, the advantages, the applications, and a brief view of uh, the internal architecture of digital process. So, what are digital processes? Digital processes are integrated circuits which perform calculations, transformations, compression and decompression of waves, and modulation on digital binary input comprised of ones and zeros, quickly and efficiently. One is considered as high binary voltage and zero considered as low binary voltage. The most common digital processes are microprocess and microcontrollers. These processes are also called as central processing unit and nicknamed as brains of the modern electronic world. Digital process speed is measured in megahertz or gigahertz. For instance, if you have a processor running at 1 gigahertz, it is considered as that 1 gigahertz processor can execute 1 million instructions per second or 1 million cycles per second. Microprocessors are classified into microprocessors and microcontrollers. Both microprocessors and microcontrollers, they look alike, but there is a subtle difference between them. Microprocessors are general purpose central processing units, while microcontrollers are specialized processing units. Microprocessors have built-in CPU and operate at a frequency greater than 1 GHz, whereas the microcontrollers have built-in CPU, RAM, ROM, and I.O. peripherals, which is all integrated on a single chip and operates at a frequency less than microprocess. Microprocess are costlier when compared to microcontrollers. They are used mostly in laptops, desktops, and supercomputers. It is the cheaper price of microcontrollers, which made mobile phones an easy commodity to buy. Gordon Moore, the Intel co-founder, once predicted that the number of transistors on a single chip will approximately double every 24 months. Now, let's look at the history of microprocessors. The first commercial microprocessor was made in the year 1974 and it has 6000 transistors incorporated on it and the smallest wire on the chip was 6 microns. The 8080 processor was able to execute 0.64 million instructions per second. In microprocessors, the data width attribute is an important attribute for all the microprocessors. The data width is the width of the arithmetic logic unit. For instance, an 8-bit arithmetic logic unit can add, subtract, multiply to 8-bit numbers, while a 32-bit ALU can manipulate 32-bit numbers. An 8-bit ALU would have to execute four instructions to add two 32-bit numbers, while a 32-bit ALU can do it in one instruction. Over the years, it exceeded Gordon Moore's expectations, and today it is able to incorporate more than 125 million transistors on a single chip with a speed of executing more than 7,000 million instructions per second. So far, we have seen digital process, types of digital process, and their history. There might be a question rising from someone. So, what is the need to process signals digitally or to convert analog signals to digital? Digital signals are discrete in time and value when compared to analog signals' continuous nature. Till now, my discussion was limited to standalone systems, computers. Other than in computers, they hold certain advantages of digitally processed signals. Digital technology has led to many advancements in radio communication, mobile communication, and satellite communication. For instance, most of you have seen the DJs playing remix songs and same tunes again and again. It is only possible due to the processing of the sound wave using a digital processor. Moreover, digital signals are less tolerant to noise and we can expect amplified signal output. Now, 
look at some more advantages of uh, digital process. Digital process are programmable, they are upgradable and flexible, they are stable and resistant to temperature and repeatability is possible in case of digital process. It means every time it gives same output irrespective of the conditions where which is not possible with the analog processors. The applications of uh, digital process include computers, mobile phones, aircrafts and missile guided systems, toys, modems, 3D graphic systems and image processing systems. Now let's quickly look at the internal architecture of a microprocessor. A microprocessor is made up of a memory unit, address bus, data bus, control bus and input output peripherals. The memory unit holds all the op cores and instruction sets, whereas the CPU allocates addresses to each op core. And the data transfer between input output devices and CPU is managed by the data bus. And the control bus manages and prioritizes the tasks. And last, the input output peripherals manages communication between all the peripherals. From the time the microprocessor was invented, there is a continuous drop in the processing times of multiplication and is now processed in 0.3 nanoseconds by the latest Intel Core i7 processor. It is clearly evident that this revolutionary device has changed the technology world. I hope my video has given you a clear description of what digital processes are and the types of digital process and why they are important in our daily lives. I thank you all for watching my video and please process your feedbacks to v.cheaterready at cqmail.com. Thank you.